Thank you, Nikki. I mean, after this introduction, it feels like I can, I can simply close it and, and leave, right? Um, no, but seriously, thank you for inviting me today. I feel like I, I kind of reached now the ultimate level of, of Silicon Valley Tours graduation. I've been there as a guest, I've been there as a co-host, and now you invited me to speak, so I'm, I'm super grateful for that. And uh, yeah, thank you for having me. And hi, everyone. Uh, really nice to meet you all. Um, before I start, maybe I would like to share uh, one thought, one, one idea that I recently had, actually also talking together with, uh, with Nikki about it and it somehow popped up, you know, that when you, when you start a business or, uh, or thinking about what, what makes a successful organization successful, and I somehow came up with these three pillars, these three topics, one of them being the story. So every organization, organization needs to build and to have and to share a story. Um, it's not only about what you're doing, but only uh, why you're doing it. It is often referred to as branding or storytelling. And the thing is that people simply love to hear stories. They much easier remember them and they can build a relationship with them. So the story is somehow this corridor of, of, of movement and everything that happens in this corridor informs then future decisions. The second one, the second pillar, um, let, let's call it calling, you know, I believe to get the right people on board, not only on your team, but in general into your community, you need to have, uh, you, you need to follow a higher purpose. People need to feel somehow emotionally touched by what you're doing. They need to feel this urge to contribute. And some, I'm, I'm talking here about something that, that's bigger than us, uh, bigger than just a job or a task. Um, it's about this question, uh, where, where, where is this going? This, uh, or um, well, it's it's about this north star that you that you want to follow, and the third pillar is kind of like this logical consequence of the first two. It's about belonging. It means belonging to a group that shares the same beliefs. It's um, it's about the same calling, about the same why. Um, that's somehow something. Uh, <laughs> put a thumbs up. I liked it already. Um, something that uh, I, uh, that you can uh, identify yourself with. And um, we often hear this term community, so something, um, something that we want to be part of. And this can be something as small as a team, but also as big as a community of your customers, partners, or whatever you're building. So it's all about this, I want to become part of something, something bigger. But now for this session, uh, let me start uh, in the very beginning. So um, maybe briefly about, uh, just about me. I mean, I've already said it, or Nikki has said it. I'm Marco, I'm the founder and chief change maker of Moonshot Pirates. With Moonshot Pirates, we encourage young, young people between 15 and 19 to dream big, to follow their own path and to start working on, on ideas that matter, something that will have a positive impact in the world. And Moonshot Pirates was somehow built as a consequence of various experiences that, that I had in my life, some personal struggles, some learnings on my journey. And when I look at my life, I mean, the start was rather ordinary. I grew up in, on the countryside in the south of Austria. I studied information management and marketing. And I always did some, some jobs on the side while I was studying, but there was one thing that kind of, after some time I noticed, um, I was really enjoying doing volunteer work. I, I always enjoyed working for some projects that will have some positive impact in our society, in our community. And when I was 16, I, um, we actually, co I actually co-founded uh, with some friends a youth initiative, a youth center in my hometown in the south of Austria. We, we raised around 450,000 uh, euros back then still shilling in Austria. And we managed to rebuild a three-story building. Back then I was still in high school. So I, I think I skipped school for around 450 hours that year. I'm still holding the record on, on unexcused uh, hours missing at school. Um, but I really noticed back then, hey, I, I enjoy doing this. You know, It was simply something that I believed in. And I noticed that I function way better working for something with purpose rather than money. And this was probably the first time when I strongly felt this 
calling that I mentioned at the beginning. So it's simply to contribute contribute to something that's bigger than me. Later, in 2013, I joined or I co-founded actually TEDx Klagenfurt. Um, Kat has already mentioned TEDx. And um, TEDx is an inter international high-level conference, in this case, in the most southern part of Austria. And I led the team there for seven years. I was the curator for seven years. In the end, more than 30 people joined the team and, and worked with us on this, uh, on this conference, bringing incredible minds, entrepreneurs, artists, scientists, politicians, like amazing people with amazing ideas to Klagenfurt. And I also became part of this global TEDx community. So, you know, this kind of triggered this whole topic of belonging. And I believe you now slowly see the pattern here. With TEDx, it was also, there's one rule that, I mean, TEDx has a lot of rules, but one rule was simply, <laughs> Kat is laughing. Um, um, with TEDx, there's uh, one, one specific rule. You have to go to one of the big events, one of the main TED events, so that you're allowed to organize an event with, which is bigger than 100 people. And in 2014, I actually uh, went to Vancouver and I often get asked about my TED moment and that is actually the, the, the one that I, I love to share. So I went to Vancouver, uh, it was TED Active in Whistler and TED in, in, in Vancouver. It was a week with the most incredible minds, great people, great organizers, entrepreneurs, and in the end of this week, everybody talks about this TED ache. So the feeling you get when you, have, when you realize you have to go back to your normal life. And um, at first I didn't know what they talked about, but then I was sitting on the plane, flying back to Austria. And during the flight, I was thinking, hey, Marco, the life that you're living right now, that, that, that's not really yours. You need to change something. And I arrived in Vienna on a Tuesday, went back to the office the very next day, and I quit my job. And I decided, so I moved to Vienna, I decided to work on things that I, I believe in things that matter. And I think that was kind of like my defining moment in life. And this, that's also somehow how my personal story evolves. So everything I've done since was simply possible because of the access to knowledge that they get, got. Um, I had suddenly this incredible network of people that supported me, that gave me uh, feedback. And um, yeah, basically all these experiences that I had in the past years um, simply uh, started uh, or made me thinking, you know, what, what would have been possible if I had that understanding in an earlier stage, in an earlier age, maybe even before I graduated high school. And um, that was the moment when Moonshot Pirates got born. So with Moonshot Pirates, uh, we are an international educational initiative based in Vienna. We are offering different kinds of services, uh, services to young people, such as three-day boot camps, online programs, group mentoring, and always with a strong focus also on personal, de personal development. So in general, uh, just to wrap it up, we have basically three core topics, one of them being moonshot thinking and personal growth. The other one, which is very close also to Nikki, he's gonna speak at our bootcamp tomorrow actually, exponential thinking, exponential technologies. And the third one being entrepreneurship. So we really uh, want to empower young people that they go out and take action and do something about the ideas and do something about the challenges in our world. And with moonshot pirates, um, the whole organization, the way we are building it, um, is based on certain beliefs and certain values. And two of them being transparency and learning. And that's why I would like to do this whole session maybe a little bit different. The thing is that we are a super young uh, organization. We are in the, in the middle of the process of getting things started. We are, uh, a lot of things are happening super fast. We experience a lot of ups and downs and struggles. Like it's as startup y as it gets. And I was simply, um, when I had with the conversation with Nikki, I simply thought, hey, I would like to share something from my actual or current uh, life and the way things are evolving here. And I would like to share that process. So that's why I, I thought, okay, you know, I would like to share transparently about the things that we are doing and how we are doing them. them. And I would also like to hear from you what you think about it. So whenever you would like to add something, whenever you feel like 
uh, I don't know, I would like to give feedback or in the end, however, I'm really curious. So I really want also to learn from you. Um, yeah, so I, will, I would like to mention five, um, five topics or five beliefs, five principles that uh, Moonshot Pirates is built on. And the first one I've already mentioned it is transparency and trust. So this one is a lot about leadership and how we are uh, working as a, as a team. There are basically two role models that I uh, follow closely. Uh, one of them being Buffer. I've, I don't know if you're familiar with them. It's a social media company um, in, in the US, actually co-founded by an Austrian. And they uh, live this idea of radical transparency very, very strongly. And I'm, I'm quite impressed by their approaches. The other one being Einhorn, which is a company producing condoms in Germany. And uh, the level of trust they put into their uh, em employees is, is, uh, is quite impressive. So taking stuff from them, uh, we try to implement different things. So one thing that we say is we don't simply don't have any secrets towards our members, our team members. We share, for example, our salaries, our equity shares, our, our, yeah, our equity um, publicly even. There's a formula and um, we, we, we want to share that with everyone so everybody knows how things are done at Moonshot Pirates. And again, things are currently being built, so not everything is out there yet, but that's kind of the things that, uh, that we are working on. We trust our team completely, so they decide when they work, what they work on, and we don't take time as a measure of, I don't know, investment or whatever. It's all about the results. So we have team members who had at least seven weeks of uh, vacation this year already, uh, but it's about you know, getting them excited about what they're doing. I also think that leadership is uh, not about tasks assign task assignments, it's, it's about inspiring them, about uplifting, about empowering them and making them being the stars of the company. We also strongly focus on getting to know each other. We just uh, had a team building recently and it was a very personal, very vulnerable experience actually. You know, we really share very personal um, topics. And um, for example, in our weekly, we can sure fix, we don't ask for deliveries or KPIs that we discuss. Uh, it, we invite our team members to share their, their wins, their achievements, their learnings. So we really try to do things differently. And three specific topics I would like to mention here. One thing is also we are trying to build here a completely new um, world in terms of roles, activities, and titles. So this is where we kind of develop our story around this topic. Uh, we try to avoid uh, terms like office, work, meeting, or employee. Um, we, we don't want the crew to, to think of Moonshot Pirates as work. We want them to, to be excited to be part of this, uh, of this uh, to be part of this, this new story being told and actually to help to create this story. And job titles, we don't see them as job descriptions or something, but as an uh, empowering. So in my case, I, I don't call myself CEO. Uh, I am rather the ch chief change maker of the company. Simon, who is in charge of the strategy and, and uh, so, like in, in old terms, you would call it call him maybe the COO. Uh, he's the chief navigator. The employees we call the crew. So they're, 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 you create already uh, some feeling of belonging. We then work similar to the TEDx concept with uh, independent global organizers who bring boot camps to their own areas. And they are called the boot camp captains. So there's a, already uh, um, another way of telling the story to, to the outside world. The teenagers, we, never, we would never call them teenagers, they are our pirates, and many, many other things. And again, this is not a final product, so it's, it's developing and evolving in a very natural way. We constantly learn and uh, add those, those terms, um, and we simply let it happen and trust the flow with that. Then another thing is um, what I really um, what we're really trying to implement is to create wow moments for everybody involved. And um, wow moments can be moments of <laughs> uh, 
Wow moments can be moments of pride, of insight, of elevation, you know. For, uh, let, let me take this um, topic of onboarding, for example, as, as, a, as an example. So Anna was the last, uh, last crew member who joined about a month ago. She joined from, from Denmark. And what we did is first, we actually surprised her at the, at the airport when she arrived. We had a welcome package for her. We wrote a document, 15 pages with recommendations for Vienna, like personal recommendations, how to survive Vienna, how to start your new life in a perfect way. Then we scheduled basically two days for her where we spent one after the other time with her uh, sharing our beliefs, sharing our values, sh uh, telling her the big story, the big vision behind Moonshot Pirates. We took her out for lunch. Uh, so we really tried to create a very, very special moment for her, something that she will remember. And um, I, 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 th I mean, yeah, it, it simply felt amazing. And, and I'm, I'm sure that she still thinks of the first days uh, when she joined. And one other thing that I'm currently working on, actually, so I'm, uh, we're not done with that one yet. Um, we're, I, I really want to implement so-called crew cards um, in order to learn from our team members, uh, it, to learn about their dreams, about their goals and their ambitions in life. So I really think that sharing about their personal goals creates trust. And this is a lot, a lot about uh, trusting each other. So I'm following here an idea from uh, Vishen Lakiani. I don't know if you know him. He's the founder of Mind Valley. And um, he, I think he calls them soul blueprint cards, something like that. Um, and it's basically uh, split into three areas. The one, the first one, uh, it's about the experience. So what experience do you want to have in your life? And um, I mean, the areas that, uh, that fall into, the, in, into this topic are like relationships, friendship, adventures, uh, environment. The second one is about growth. How do you want to grow? Um, you know, growth makes life an endless journey of discovery. And here the topics would be health and fitness, intellectual life, skills, spiritual growth. And the third one then being the topic of contribution. So how do you want to contribute? Because this is kind of like this ultimate level of, of happiness. And here then it's about the career, creative life, family life, uh, community, and so on. So basically, every team member joining uh, has to fill out those cards. And we then put them on the wall together with a picture. And we, with that, we, we simply get to know each other way, way better. And uh, I really, uh, I, why I'm doing it is simply, we want to help those to, to achieve their goals, you know, if there's something that, you know, triggers a thought that triggers a connection, we can actually make things happen. And that's kind of like this uh, basic idea behind this crew card. So when I think about leadership, and when I think about uh, how to build Moonshot Pirates, my dream is really that, um, that people leave in the evening with more energy that they came from, uh, that they arrived with in the uh, then, then they arrived uh, with in the morning. This is kind of like my, my, my dream setting for how we work at Moonshot Pirates. So that was kind of like the first area, transparency and trust. I have a question, Marco. Yeah, is, sure. this, is it a kind of, or a similar to the big five of life? Um, I have heard of them. I, I have to admit that I didn't, uh, okay, I didn't okay. read that. Um, it's more like it, those, those five topics kind of naturally evolved. It's what we believe in. I, I, it could be that it's the same. I, I can't answer that. So I didn't copy them anywhere. It's more like, okay, what comes up first? And that's what we did. That's what okay, thank you. The second topic now, or the second belief, the second principle is we are driven by purpose. So this is kind of like uh, about our very own moonshot. We, with Moonshot Pirates, we want to transform globally how young people grow up. We want to transform education on a global scale. And in technical terms, you could say uh, this, this is our massive transformative purpose. You hear that a lot in the Silicon Valley. And ours would be, we want to make everyone a change maker. Um, we always put pirates first. So this is, whatever happens, it's always impact over money. 
And uh, I also here have a, a role model that I like a lot, uh, which is Zappos, because services, uh, their absolute priority there. So they really, I, I don't know if you, there is a video somewhere on YouTube, you can Google it. Uh, you Google it on YouTube, doesn't matter. Um, it, it's a service call, a, cust a customer call. I think they've, they've been on the phone for 18 hours or something. So there is, it's always about the customer and make the customer happy. And this is very, very close to my heart and close to what we're doing. And we really want to take the time and, uh, to, uh, in order to listen and uh, in order to be able to help our, our pirates. And we really want to go the extra mile. And um, one thing that we've implemented here is uh, we somehow created this new identity. So our, 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 our students, our pirates, they go out and and say, I am a moonshot pirate. Um, this is something that we do from the very beginning. So we really create a feeling of belonging, a feeling of uh, being part of this movement. Uh, we are creating a new world with this term. And, and our students, they don't only join an event or an online activity, they become, become part of this community. And, Tomorrow, the first thing when we kick off our bootcamp, the first thing they will hear from us is, you are a moonshot pirate now. So we really push that a lot and it, it creates a moment of pride and, and, and they, they somehow become a part of this, this story being told. Uh, they suddenly feel the urge of contributing and you know, it's like, okay, wow, I'm a pirate now. I need to think differently. I need to do things differently, uh, things differently. And uh, for example, we also just had a call open for young advisors and uh, all the applicants sent us videos and the connection we felt there from them, it was incredible. So it's really, really cool to see that. Also, it's our goal to, to have this, this uh, term pirate in the future connotated to something very positive. That's kind of like this ultimate goal with, with, uh, with the topic or with the term of pirates. And, you know, we are in the field of education that a lot of young people disapprove of. But in our case, they really want to be part of. Um, yeah, that's uh, basically this whole thing about, um, about uh, building a new, a new identity and um, you know, movement around it. Um, the third principle is uh, called played forward. Obviously already, um, I mean, it, it is obviously an element of calling and you might be familiar with this topic or with, the, with this paid forward, uh, which got coined in the Silicon Valley, I believe. Uh, to pay it forward means that you have been successful with something that you have done in, the, in, in your life, in your business, and you want to support now someone that you know, someone that you like with, with their project without expecting anything in return. The only thing is that that person needs to promise in case they succeed, they do the same. So they, they pay it again forward to the next one. And to play it forward simply means uh, it's basically the same just without the money. So it's, it's about contributing in, in any other way. And as we are a purpose-driven enterprise or nonprofit, we really depend on others supporting our, our, our purpose, uh, sharing our values and, and contributing to what we are doing here. I strongly believe that um, it is our responsibility to contribute to the next generation, uh, to their growth and to their education. And um, I believe every one of us has something valuable, some, some amazing experiences to share that young people can benefit uh, from. And so we have different, different roles, different people uh, contributing here. Actually, two of them being right in this call. We have um, mentors uh, who are experts from different areas who help young people with developing their ideas, but also help them on a, on a personal level. We have advisors, Marcus being one of them. He helped us uh, the last couple of months in an amazing way to develop the concept also in order to uh, do the next funding round. Uh, we are currently establishing this program for ambassadors, which is actually built up by Nikki. So he's going to be the first or is the first ambassador of Moonshot Pirates. Um, 
And I've mentioned them already, we have the bootcamp captains, so the global independent organizers that say, hey, this is something amazing. I want to have that in my, in my community and I want to bring a bunch of pirates there. And I believe our main USP with everything that we're doing is that there are actually real people behind what we're doing. So this is not just an online program where you can watch some video or where, where you, I don't know, uh, read an article or have a pre-recorded webinar. This is something where you actually meet real people in everything that we are doing. And uh, I think that's, that's something beautiful because young people can then actually engage with those people and, and, and uh, have an interaction. So um, that is all about this play forward principle that we strongly believe in. Um, the next, the fourth topic uh, that I would like to touch briefly is we consider ourselves being a data company. Now this is a completely different perspective on the whole thing, but I, I'm not sure how familiar you are with that term. In a nutshell, as a data company, you take uh, a very large set of complex data uh, from multiple channels to analyze it and to find, I don't know, patterns, trends, problems and opportunities. And that data should help you to make better sense of your business and, and, and your future steps and your futures, uh, future decisions. So we see everything happening as an information. It's basically bias free, you know, data is data over opinion. Um, if you don't have data, you only can make uh, assumptions and um, being a data company helps us to make informed future, future decisions and it defines the narrative, the, the, the story that we're telling here. But it's not just about a nice story now to be told, it's uh, actually about the, the steps and decisions that you're making and those must be based on actual data. So what we're doing in the background um, is we're building a digital platform that aggregates all the, all the activities that tracks the steps of our students and that helps us to understand their needs, their requirements, their weaknesses, their strength. And based on that, we are able to, uh, to provide them then with an individualized offer with services, with, um, with content that would actually help them to grow in the long run. So uh, for the, like, when, when, I, when I think about the future, it's simply that we want to have a matchmaking algorithm in the background where you have the students, the needs of them, and matching them with the content that they actually, that, that, that's gonna actually help them to grow. And when I think about, you know, uh, when you go on Google, you usually just search for things um, that you know that you don't know. But there's a lot of stuff out there that we don't know that we don't know. And that's where we want to come into play and, and connect those two, those two uh, parts. And I really believe that uh, the future of a successful company in the uh, uh, lies basically in understanding their customers. I don't want to call our students customers, but uh, yeah, still. And building, um, we, I think we all should build our, our, our organizations based on data and knowledge instead of assumptions. Um, and yeah, and that basically leads me already to the last uh, topic, the last principle, which is uh, we learn every day. So, I mean, being an educational initiative, it sounds kind of obvious, but also it's about us as a team, as a crew. So we really try to share and get feedback from all the team members constantly. We are constant, uh, we are currently, uh, I've mentioned it, we are currently in the process of establishing a young advisor report. So, we had 30 young minds applying for uh, to become uh, young, young advisors for Moonshot Pirates, um, which is like I, I've never expected that. They really uh, want to be part of this for a whole year. Uh, they want to give us feedback, share the ideas, uh, do brainstorming with us in order uh, for so so that we can develop uh, <laughs> that we can develop. Um, on, based on their actual needs and we can learn from our target audience. Um, also in terms of learning, I think diversity is something very, very beautiful and key. We are currently 12 crew members uh, from nine different uh, countries, nine different nationalities. Imagine how much you learn uh, just in the office talking to all these different people. 
Um, so that's a really beautiful thing. We encourage them, of course, also to, to do some, um, to take some classes in personal development and all those things. We celebrate our wins. And if you have the wins, of course, you're also failing a lot. And uh, we use failure as, uh, as documentation and improvement. So every fail is a data point. And that, uh, that's another aspect actually of this data company uh, that I just mentioned before. But we really try to collect data wherever possible. So we experiment, we test, we evaluate, we implement the, the things that work uh, and those who don't work either we um, put them aside or we improve them and try again. So there's this concept of growth hacking. Uh, I'm not sure if Nikki has already mentioned it in one of the sessions. Uh, that's something that we are uh, trying to establish uh, within our crew. Um, also, in all the, uh, you know, when, when all, our, uh, all of our gatherings, we really openly discuss uh, the things that we can improve on. Um, after we're closing, for example, a project, what worked, what didn't work. Um, we really, actually, we have a Slack channel called Fuck Ups. And uh, we, we document everything that goes wrong. So every failed step, every approach that went wrong is documented there. And then we go back, evaluate, uh, and, and try to improve. We evaluate with our partners, with students, with, with the mentors who really try to learn from them. And the, the advisory report I've already mentioned. So, and having those data points, having that information, we really try to to review quickly, to review the quick, uh, steps quickly, to learn from it, and then immediately implement improvements if there are any necessary or even close uh, certain projects. So this is all about um, the learning aspect of, of Moonshot Pirates. Um, yeah, so I, I, I told you this is a lot of a lot of the stuff is currently in the making. So we are currently, I mean, we got founded uh, we started with Moonshot Pirates about two years ago, and we are now officially one year and two months, I think, uh, since our official founding date. Uh, so a lot of the a lot of the stuff is currently happening. It, it's currently being built up, and um, I'm really really curious what you think about it. What are your thoughts? What is your feedback? How would you approach things? Um, I really want to learn from you, and um, I. On the other hand, I also, I really hope that my insights were somehow useful for you. I'm not saying that we have figured all out. As I said, we are learning a lot. We are failing a lot. Um, and uh, yeah, maybe I, I, I have the chance to share the, the, the results and the findings some, somewhere in the future. I don't know, in a few, a few months or years, so I'd, I'd love to. But I would also like to ask you and to encourage you to, to, to think about your story and about you know, uh, what is the environment that you would like to work at? What's, what story should people think of when they hear your brand? And um, think also about the bigger purpose behind what you're doing. So what is your calling? How do you ignite this calling in the people involved uh, in, your, in your organization? And then of course, ultimately, uh, who do you want to have as your peers? So how do you support that feeling of belonging? 